Hi everybody, this is another guy today. I'm gonna do another figure review. This time we can look at a Rebirth of Mothra monster, and this is the Bandai six inch or seven inch Death Ghidorah, or as some people call it, Death Ghidorah. And this is the flying form. There is a land form. It does exist in, of course, the the movie that he appeared in. But unfortunately, there's no figure of him. But anyways, now let's get into the actual figure review. So first of all, let's go to uh, history. So he only and yeah, he basically only appeared in uh, Rebirth of Mothra, the first of the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy. So basically, his role in that movie was basically that he was a prehistoric dragon from a long, long, long time ago. You know, from prehistoric times, of course. And then, basically, he was sealed up, uh, you know, a couple centuries ago, I guess you can say. Then he got reawoken mistakenly by the arrogance of men, obviously. And then wrecked havoc on, you know, the city. Or actually, no. He wasn't attacking the city. There was literally no city at all, like, shown in the movie. Like, maybe a bits, maybe some bits and parts of the movie did show the city. You know, of the main characters. But the fight didn't take didn't took place in the city. But anyway, so basically he wrecked havoc in the forest, and then that's when uh, Mothra and Mothra Larva came in, and Imago Mothra got killed because she got drowned by the water by the ocean, and then that's when Mothra Larva turned into Mothra Leo, and then uh, defeated Death Ghidorah, and finally. Um, sealed up Death Ghidorah or Death Ghidorah once again, and that's the end of the movie. Or, yeah, that's the end of the movie. And that's also the end for history. And hopefully we might even see maybe Godzilla fighting off Death Ghidorah, or this incarnation of Ghidorah. Hopefully we'll see that soon. So anyway, now let's go into detail. So first of all, before I go into detail, let's look at the paint job. Yeah, pretty inaccurate. Many people... Or, you know, upset about the paint job, that it's white. They are correct that, you know, the movie, in the movie, he was completely black and red. There was no bits of white at all. Not even the horns right here were white. I don't think they were red, or, or were they? I forgot about this part, but I don't think they were white. They were just completely black. But one thing I do have to say is that it makes it more appealing in your shelf. Once you place it in your shelf, it stands out more than just being plain red and black. If it's just plain red and black, it might maybe just reflect or just be a random figure right there. But with the white, it makes it stands, stand out, you know, from the other figures, and also makes it look less bland looking. So I think it was kind of a good idea adding the whites. So now that's... Pain is out of the way and all that stuff. Now let's go into the actual detail. So first of all, the foreheads or the heads, you know, very nicely detailed. Uh, right there we have all this stuff right here. Very nice. And also the teeth are not individually sculpted, just a whole blob. But who cares? And also the eyes are red and the forehead looks very nice actually. The, the detail, you see the detail there? Yeah, I think you can see it. Same thing for all the rest of the heads. And really enough, I don't know if it's just my figure, but if you notice this neck... The middle head, or the middle neck, you know, whatever, is more closer to this head, and not too much in the middle. I don't know if it's just mine, or if that's how all the, all the Death Ghidorah figures were made. But anyways, uh, let's, uh, what else can you look at? Okay, the necks, right here, the top part of the neck looks very nice, very awesome. And, uh, let's see, what else? The bottom part of the necks looks very scaly, kind of like a snake. Very similar to the snake, and then we have the chest right there. Very bony looking right here. It looks very nice, and we have this thick thing right here, and what the heck. Now let's look at the legs. The legs are actually very beautiful looking. Completely white, and the beautiful skills right here. And look at that big bulge. It's like red and black and all that stuff. Same thing for this one also. Oh, uh, what else? Can we look at the back? Or actually, no, for the wings. They have this glossy look to them. And, of course, the back, it also looks very gorgeous also. And we also have this stuff right here. I don't know what the heck it is supposed to be. I guess that's, like, connecting the wings to the body, I guess, or something. 
but that looks also pretty nice. And since we're already right here, let's might as well just look at the back. The back is filled with all these spiky stuff right here, really, really, really uh, rough and spiky. And I actually didn't saw that in the actual film yet, so I'm probably missing out on something. So here we have the back, all these, all these ridges and stuff like that, and also the back legs. Same thing as the front leg, except they're more, I don't know, thicker, I guess you can say. Very nice, and the the way it's sculpted look a little like the Angerous figure, a tiny bit, except the foot actually is on the ground. And anyway, so now let's go into the tail. Uh, I never noticed this in the um, in the movie itself, but Death Ghidorah has this stuff in his um, in his tail. Very nicely detailed. It looks like a fish kind of. It looks like a fish kind of like thing. That's pretty cool. And right here, look at this beautiful detail at the end of the tail. That looks beautiful. Man, that just looks very gorgeous, man. Wow, and all these st spiky stuff. And, of course, the forked tail, which looks a lot like the um, the Gomez tail, because Gomez also has a forked tail. And let's might as well just look at the underside. The underside also looks beautiful. Look at all these scales. Looks very similar to a snake, you know, the texture of a snake. So that's that's pretty cool. And that's all for detail. Detail is pretty, pretty nice. So now let's go into uh, articulation. So first of all, for articulation, um, the legs can go up and down. They can't rotate 360 because the wings, but even if you put the wings, um, if you make the wings out of the way, it's still kind of tough or rough to make the uh, legs rotate 360, which I do not recommend it rotating at 360. Also, the wings can also rotate 360. They're this, like, very soft vinyl. But be aware that these wings could pop off. So really be aware of that. Don't just grab it and then just rotate it just like that. Be careful. Be careful with your figures. Uh, also, the legs can also rotate 360 with ease. But you have to move the wings out of the way. And finally, the tail rotates 360 even though... If you rotate 360, it could pop off. As you see there, it's ready to pop off. If I do it a little more, even more. So I do not recommend it. I do not recommend rotating at 360 the tail. So that's that. So mostly stiff points such as the tail and the front legs. But overall, the articulation is average. It's all right. It's good. Now let's go to superpowers. This is gonna be one. Heck of a tough one for me, because I haven't really seen the movie for a long time. So, first of all, he can shoot these beams out of his mouth, I think. It's like this red beam. And he can also shoot fireballs as well, which is pretty cool. Another thing I think he can do, I think he can open the earth, and then, like, basically shoot out the core, and then... I guess he can open the earth's crust, I think he can do, which is... Man, that's very powerful. I think he can do that, I'm not really sure. Another thing you can do is, of course, fly. Uh, I'm probably missing a bunch of things. Um, what else can he do? Um, I think... And also, he's very durable. Also, very, very durable. Because he has this very armor, armored skin. And I think that's all for superpowers. He's actually a very, very tough Ghidorah. Of course, the power of him opening like the Earth's crust is incredibly powerful. I'm not really sure if that's one of his powers or if I'm confusing it with something else such as EX Red King. But I think that is one of his powers. So overall, very, very tough. Now let's go into sizing. So first of all, let's size him up with another King Adora. In this case, the Bandai 6-inch G... Or actually, no, 8-inch line. Jim K. King Adora. Way better than Bandai Creations. But anyways, um, this is actually very, very bad sizing because um, the Jim K. King Adora... Especially Jim K. King Adora. He's actually smaller than Godzilla, of course. And overall, he's probably the smallest King Adora. Um, he's basically 49 meters, and Death of Ghidorah is 50 meters. So this is overall pretty bad sizing. Um, Death Ghidorah should be like this tall, probably. So that's sizing for the Jim K. Bandai 8-inch line uh, King Adora. Now size him up with a Mothra that's in part of the Rainbow, excuse me, part of the um, the Rebirth of Mothra series. This is Rainbow Mothra. Um, I was gonna take out Fire Mothra because I do have the Fire Mothra figure, but this is more size accurate. 
as you see there, way more size accurate. Um, Mothra Leo was actually kind of small compared to Death Cador. I think Mothra should be a tiny bit bigger, maybe like this big, maybe. Maybe this big. Let's actually move this wing out of the way. Kind of. Okay, there. Kind of. But I think Rayo Mothra should be a tiny bit bigger, maybe like this big, maybe. Around there. But overall, pretty good sizing. So that's Rayo Mothra from Bandai Creations. Kind of weird how Bandai Creation made a real Mothra figure instead of a regular Mothra figure. And finally, I set them up with um, an Ultraman Kaiju that I just randomly uh, got from my collection. And this actually looks a lot like Death Ghidorah. This is uh, Zogu. Final form Zogu. And this is, of course, obviously bad sizing. I do not know exactly the size of Zogu, but I do know how ginormous he is. So let's just scoot him all the way in the back. Uh, basically, Zogu is around, I can't really measure up, but just, like, I'll just tell you how big he is. Basically, Death Ghidorah will reach all the way to Zogu, like, probably all the way here. That's how big, um, Death Ghidorah will be compared to Zogu. Yeah. Zogu, I think, is, like, a thousand feet tall or something. I'm not really sure, like, 500, I don't know what the heck. But, Death Ghidorah will probably, actually, no, I think it'll be a little big. I think Death Ghidorah will probably be this big compared to Zogu. So obviously ginormous. So that's Zogu. And that's basically all for sizing. Now let's go into Rarity. Rarity, he's actually a very, very rare figure. Um mostly goes for two hundred bucks. I saw one I think for seventy five bucks and that's how much I got him for. Which is actually a pretty big steal considering he can go for over two hundred bucks or I think the least I've seen him is a hundred bucks. And that's without the box. With the box, good luck, because you're probably going to spend a good chunk of your money. Probably around $230, literally, or $200. So I got mine without the box. There was this other version that the, the horn was ripped. I almost got that version, but then right at the last second, I noticed that the horn was ripped, so I definitely didn't get that. And instead, I got this one. So. That's all for uh, rarity. Basically, very, very rare. And if you find him, he costs a lot. So now let's go into the actual score. Score, I'd probably give this figure a 9.5 out of 10. The, of course, paint accuracy, I don't really, like, I'm not really accurate with the paint. I don't, like, the thing I do care about paint is that if it's bland and if it, you know, sticks out from the other figures, and it sure does achieve that. So that doesn't matter. And the sizing it should be a little better. That's why I just you know took off uh uh point five points. So that's basically it for this review. Nine point five out of ten. Very awesome figure. Probably I think my fifth favorite figure that I have. So that's basically all for this review. Hope you enjoy. Tell me comment below. What is your favorite Godora incarnation? This is my favorite Godora incarnation, so I definitely had to pick this up. So anyways, and for this video, subscribe, like, and comment. This is Mother Kaiju, signing out.